And that is why, no matter how well-intended your employee is, you will always be exploited by them, because of the way capitalism is structured. The labor theory of value basically proves this beyond doubt. You can never get paid the true value of your labor, because the employer always takes a surplus value. And this is why employer-employee relationships are always unjust. Yeah, you say that, but what you neglect to mention is the fact that the employee has consented to this relationship. If both employer and employee agree to it, then it has to be, if not just, at least voluntary. And if people want to work this way, there is no reason to prohibit it. You can't just prevent other people from making consensual choices. Yes, we can. Sometimes we have to prohibit some things in order to protect people from themselves. Like, for example, you can't consent to selling yourself as a slave. And some people are too young or uninformed to consent. For example, children cannot consent to having sex because they're not ready to make that decision. Well, actually, I think that the age of consent shouldn't be quite as restrictive as it is right now. After all, why should no, the government... stop it. Why? Because the anchor pedophile joke is not funny anymore and actually kinda tasteless. Alright, anyway, I think capitalism is just fine because in the end, someone who doesn't want to doesn't have to be an employee. Well, if you think that, I don't think I can change your mind. What? Is there someone there? What, what are you doing here? No! What, what, what is this? Where am I? Oh, hey, you woke up. Nice to see you, Ankap. You're my guest now. You live here. What is this? Is this some kind of sick joke? You can't trap me in here. It violates the NIP. You can't keep me here against my will. Oh, I'm sorry, Ankap, but there's nothing I can do about that. Yes, it's true. I have the key to the door and I could let you out. I'm afraid that would mess with the natural order of things. You know, humans are actually surprisingly similar to lobsters, and a strong lobster would never give a key to a weak lobster. And right now, I am the super lobster. To let you out would violate natural hierarchy. You can't do this. I demand to be let out of this place. Just wait until my private security corporation hears about this. Hmm, let's see. I can't just let you out. That wouldn't be fair to those who are still trapped in dungeons. But we can make a deal. You work for me, and in exchange I will provide you with food and water. Of course, I will keep most of the value you produce, but eventually, if you have saved up enough, you will be free of this place. No pressure, of course, it's completely voluntary, and you can choose not to do it as well. It's just an offer. What is this supposed to be? Is this supposed to be a bad metaphor or something? That's a bingo. You see, the dungeon here represents different problems unemployed people have to deal with, like a loss of most luxuries of modern life, as well as trouble fulfilling their basic needs like eating and drinking. Now, you, much like an unemployed person, have to work for someone who is in a position of power over you. And while I am not technically forcing you to work for me, the situation you are in means you have no other option than to engage in the unjust contract I am proposing. That's the same way that the free market forces workers to work on pain of poverty and even starvation. What? No, this simile is all wrong. I have no choice here, I have to work for you or else I die in this dungeon. The free market isn't like that, you get to choose your employer. There are many ways out of poverty. Oh, fair point. Let me change this up a little bit. Look, now you have a choice. Not only can you work for me, but also for my trusty friend here, who will offer you a very similar but technically different contract. Now you have a choice. But that doesn't make sense, I still have no meaningful choice and no matter who I choose, I am still in an unjust power structure and have no way to change the system built on exploiting the ones who are trapped in a hopeless situation. Hey, I think you might start to get it. No, this simile is still wrong. In capitalism you have more choices than working for different employers. You can choose to start your own business and be your own boss. Well, if you want to do that, I will sell you this old spoon for only half a year of labor. What? How is that supposed to help me out of here? Well, you can just dig through the walls and escape the situation. Then you can dig your own dungeon and you can become the one to profit of the misery of others. Isn't it great how many options you have? Matter of fact, I used to be in your situation. Being in a dungeon, forced to work for someone I didn't want to work for. But I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and dug my way out of there. Isn't that inspiring? Not really. The fact that you used to be exploited doesn't mean you can justify doing the same to others. And besides that, why do I only get a spoon? Didn't you get a shovel? What is that supposed to represent? Advantages at birth. It just happens that my parents had a very successful dungeon and made it very easy for me to become a dungeon owner myself. Yeah, but that's not fair. Even if I managed to accumulate enough value to be able to afford a spoon to start my own dungeon, I wouldn't have a way to compete with the big dungeon owners and eventually I'd end up back in a dungeon again having to do manual work in an attempt to get out. Yeah, but you had an opportunity to leave the dungeon. It's a voluntary system and just because you're bad at this doesn't make it not good. You had your opportunity to be your own dungeon owner. Maybe you were just meant to be the bottom lobster. 
but this doesn't make any sense. Not only am I forced into exploitation by the conditions I'm in, but I'm also called a bad business person for not exploiting others in the same position. This system isn't fair and it's not voluntary either. Abolish the dungeons. So you're saying the fact that you're trapped in these circumstances means that the decision to work for one of us is not really voluntary since you were forced to make it. Yeah, and you think that the fact that you theoretically have the ability to one day mistreat other people in vulnerable positions for profit as well does not justify the system. Yeah, and I assume you also don't approve of the excuse that people naturally end up in unequal power distributions because of lobsters. No, I don't. Lobsters are bullshit. In that case, I think you've learned enough. You may leave now. R really? Yes. You have shown that you only approve of this exploitative system if the exploitation is not directed against you. You have now learned that capitalism is not a voluntary system and that calling it that is just an excuse to deny power to the oppressed. Y yeah, I think in some strange way you're right. Thank you, call me pig. That, that's not really my name. But whatever. I'm now free again and I will use this freedom to help and save the oppressed from the oppressors. That sounds good to me. Haha, <laughs> sick! Anarcho-capitalism forever! Long live exploitation! Done with age of consent laws! I told you not to make that joke! Suck my anarchist dick, Kami! Hmm, it's almost as if locking people in dungeons to prove my point turns them away. Maybe I should have sent them a video detailing this exact scenario to make them realize how capitalism isn't voluntary instead of actually locking them up. Oh well, maybe next time. Thanks for watching! Please share this with everyone who says that wage labor is voluntary. And also remember to like, share and subscribe. I'd like to say a special thanks to my Patreons for motivating me and an extra special thanks to Aaron J. Patton for your generous donation.